So last week we left off still in the tools section of strings and we ended up leaving off with grouped matches. So last week and the week before we talked about different uses of parentheses, but another use for parentheses is we can use them to extract parts of a complex match. So here they're kind of acting as two capture groups that we talked about before, but we're extracting a complex match within one string using these parentheses. So here we're extracting, we're trying to look for a pattern match of A or the in a white space, and then anything except for a white space, because this caret is inside of the square bracket. So that means anything except repeated or iterated one or more times. So with this example, we'll take from the sentences data that we've been using before. We'll pull a subset out, which is the complete string, or sorry, the complete sentence that matches this variable. And then we'll pull the first 10 of those. And then from that first 10 set, we'll extract uh, the actual text of whatever this, this variable is. So if we recall, stir extract pulls out the actual text of the match. Stir subset pulls out the entire string that contains the match. So uh, what we get from this with the stir extract is the exact match. So the smooth, the sheet. And the idea is that they're trying to find, uh, with this example, they're trying to find anything that might is most likely a noun, meaning it starts with a or the. Um, it doesn't work in every case. Obviously, this is just kind of an example because things like uh, helps, they, there's some verbs in here. So it doesn't exactly work, but there are a lot of nouns in there. So it kind of works. So this is kind of just what I mentioned. Stir extract gives the complete match. Oh, and then stir match will give the individual component uh, in a character matrix. So if we put stir match from that same group and then we use the stir match function and look for the noun, it'll pull in, it'll return it in a matrix and the first column will be the entire match. And then the second column will be the first part of the match. Third column will be the second part of the match, et cetera, if there were more matches and they turn them into individual strings. So this just mentions our method for detecting nouns as poor also picks up adjectives like smooth and part. So if your data is in a tibble, it's often easier to use the extract function from the tidyr package and it works like stir match, but it requires you to name the matches which are then placed in new columns. So you're essentially uh, naming the columns. So we can take um, a tibble and call it sentence and it will be using the sentences data. And then we use that extract function and then we'll pull out um, the, We'll be here's where we're naming what we're what we're pulling out. We're naming the first column article, second column not noun, and then here's our here's our same match again. So this remove, I think I write later on what the I forgot what this remove false is, but I write about it uh, I think later on here. So anyway, this is what we receive. So it's a little bit easier to look at. It's kind of the same idea as that example right here, but it's not in strings and our columns are labeled and it's in the form of a tibble. So it's kind of nicer to look at where we have this column article, this column noun, and it splits, it pulls out the entire sentence and then just pulls out the match. So here's, here's our match. So, uh, and if you want to find all, you, if you wanna find all matches for each string, you use stir match all. And I, I didn't try that, but I assume it would return um, additional columns for additional matches within each string. So for the exercises, find all words that come after a number like one, two, or three, and then pull out both the number and the word. So this is just basically asking us to use that same function that we just learned about, the stir match function. So here we have, uh, we're searching for a match. This is a complex match. We're looking for the words one or two or three, then a white space, then anything except a white space repeated one or more times. 
So, and then we'll subset out the entire sentence, pull the first 10, and then match um, this match right, oops, this match right here, this top one. There we go, uh, right here. So it'll pull out the complete match right here, and then it will just pull and separate out into two columns, the first part of the match and the second part of the match. And this is correlates with this first parenthesis, this first complex match, and this correlates with this. And notice that we don't have, even though this white space is part of this string, it's not included in here, which is kind of nice because it returns it in kind of a nice, neat way. It's not like we have a space in between here. So it's nice and neat how it uh, puts the output there with the stir match function. Uh, the next question is to find all contractions. So anything that's like apostrophe S or apostrophe RE or something like that, two words uh, put together and separate out the pieces before and after the apostrophe. Uh, so this is basically the same thing, but instead of putting a white space, instead of searching for a white space in there, we're searching for an, an apostrophe. So same thing, same pattern here, any word, apostrophe, any, any character. Um, do the same process we did here, we'll pull out the entire sentence, pull the first 10, and then use match for this for this contraction variable. And does the same thing here. And also notice what, what I was just talking about up there when it returns, it doesn't actually return the part that's not in the, um, um, the parentheses for this for this second part for when it separates out your matches here it does because it gives you the complete match but then here and here it just returns what's right before the apostrophe and then what's after the apostrophe but not the apostrophe itself which is nice so replacing matches uh, we can use stir replace and stir replace all to replace matches with new strings this one's fairly uh fairly straightforward we can take this string use the stir replace function to search for any, any vowel and replace it with a hyphen. So here's your search parameter. And then this argument is what you want to replace it with. So it just replaces the first vowel in each string. If we wanna replace all the vowels in each string, we'll use to replace all and input the same thing here. But it will, instead of replacing just one vowel, it'll replace every vowel in each string. So with stir replace all, we can perform multiple replacements by supplying a named vector. <clears throat> so this is kind of handy. If we have a, a vector, this is a short vector, but if imagine if we had a really long one, we could kind of make something that would be helpful for us. Uh, here, we're just replacing the number, even though it's not a number, it's, it's technically a character because it's within strings, but we want to replace the number one with the actual word one and two, three, et cetera. So here's what we're, here's the data we're looking at. And then here is our, a vector of what we're searching for and what we wanna replace it with, what we're searching for, what we wanna replace it with, et cetera. And then that's our output there. So instead of replacing with a fixed string, you can use back references to insert components of the match. Um, and we talked about back references, I think it was last week. Um, and this is kind of bringing those back again. So we're taking these grouped matches here and we want, this is what we're searching for is this kind of any word, a space, any word, a space, any word. So, but it's in this order. So it's the first word. We're looking for the first three words basically. So the first word, the second word, the third word. And then we want to replace it with these back references. So we want to replace that with the first word, the third word, and then the second word. So we're just flip flopping the second and the third words. So we get this kind of nonsense sentence back. So instead of the birch canoe slid on the smooth planks, we get the canoe birch slid on the smooth planks. So it's essentially just switching the second and third words. Um, in this example, it doesn't really make any sense, but I was thinking about when this would maybe make sense. And I know 
um, if there was ever a, a case where you need to switch two words with each other. And I was just thinking where I live, I'm about, I'm in the States and I'm about 15 miles south of the Canadian border. So we have a lot of Canadians around here. And they always say, when they're talking about school, they always say, um, we always say like fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, they'll say grade five, grade six, grade seven. I'm not sure how uh, everybody else does it, but it's just something I was like, oh, that's kind of just the same. If there was ever a case where you had a document and you just needed to switch something like that, that's where it potentially could come in handy. So for the exercises, replace all forward slashes in a string with backslashes. This is a nonsense. This word doesn't this doesn't mean anything, but it's just kind of for the sake of the example to get something to work. Uh, since it's in a string, we need to escape it once, this backslash. And we want to use, so we want to replace all of them within the whole string. So we used to replace all. And then we're looking for a single backslash. This is our four to one thing here, where it's four backslashes mean, means one literal backslash in a regular expression. And we want to replace it with a forward slash. And since a forward slash is not a special character, we do not need to escape it. So this is our output. And this is kind of what we were looking for. This actually makes sense, whereas this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> uh, question number two is implement a simple version of stir to lower using stir replace all. So if you recall, stir to lower is uh, just takes uppercase letters and turns them into lowercase letters. So we kind of found a simple way to do this um, using stir replace all. I did the biggest city in Washington is Seattle. And then we want to, from that string, we want to look for, this. Okay. Um, sorry, I just had something pop up on my screen there. Um, so we want, we're looking for any uppercase letter, anything from A to Z that's uppercase, uppercase, and we wanna replace it with this little function. So this is a base R function. It does the exact same thing if I were to type in stir to lower without, without the parentheses, it does the same thing. To lower is just a base R function that does the same thing and it was a little bit shorter to type. So I, I just typed that. So we can just do to, uh, to lower without the parentheses at the end. And it does the same function there, just turns every uppercase within the string into lowercase. Uh, switch the first and last letters in the words group. In which of these strings are still, still words? So for the first part of the question, switch the first and last letters. Uh, I just named this variable flip-flop. <laughs> um, so we'll take words and then we'll replace this string with with this string. So I used back references here. So we're searching for um, the first character, um, the middle character, any middle characters, and the last character. And we're replacing that with three, two, and one. So we're keeping this capture group the same. This is essentially one, two, three. We're keeping this one the same. And this could be any number of characters repeated zero or more times but we're flip-flopping the first character and the last character. So that's what this, this does, this variable right here. So then we are, for the second part of this question, which part of these strings are still words? Thinking about this, I was like, well, the only way it would still be a word would be if those first, in the first place, if the first and last letter were the same letter. So, and that way in here, we're just checking basically, um, looking for, we're trying to subset out anything from that group that matches this pattern, which means the first letter is the same as the last letter. So there's the first letter, anything repeated uh, zero or more times. And then here's this same group right here, which is the first letter again, but it's at the end. So it's basically saying the first letter is the same as the last letter and then show us the first five of those. So it seems to seems to have worked because here we have uh, just it's returning the words that have the same first and last letter. So onto splitting, we can use stir split to split up a string into pieces. Uh, and this one is pretty pretty straightforward. We want to split. We want to take the sentences group and we want to split 
by the white space. So what we get returned is this each, it splits by white space each word, and then it turns that word into its own string with length one. And notice that it does include the period in here, and we'll find something that fixes that in a little bit here. So if you're working with a length one vector, so you don't have a sentence, your, ve your ve vector that you're starting with is just length one. The easiest thing to do is to just extract the first element of the list. So here we're gonna take this string, we're gonna split it by this uh, bar, and we need to double escape that because that does have a special meaning, that is a special character. And, uh, and then we're just pulling any character that's the first element of the list. So we're just extracting the first element of the list. So we just get A, B, C, and D, and we're not pulling out the, um, we're splitting it by that character here. And so it's not returning that character. And we can use simplify true equals true to return a matrix, which can be kind of handy if you wanna look at it that way. So same thing here, we're splitting it by the white space, putting in the uh, argument or the parameter simplify equals true. And then it just returns it where each row is the sentence and each column is the, the individual word that is split by the white space. Once again, including the period at the end there. So uh, we can also request a maximum number of pieces. From what, from what I understand, pieces means uh, columns, a maximum number of columns or pieces that you wanna split it into, but it returns it as columns. So in this example, we have um, uh, a vector of these three strings. We wanna separate it by, we wanna split it by the colon and the white space. And then we want to have a maximum of two pieces or columns and simplify true, meaning that it's returning it into in this matrix form. So that's pretty straightforward there. So this is pretty handy. So instead of splitting up strings by patterns, we can also split them by character, line, sentence, and word boundary. So another way of saying the same thing is within the boundary function, we can use character in double quotes, line break, sentence, or word. And we'll see examples of this. And this is just, this is pretty handy, actually. I didn't do a lot of playing around with this, but just from what this lesson was teaching, I was, I, it, it's a pretty handy function when you, um, and you can put it inside of stir view all function or your stir split function. But anyway, so this is what this does. Using stir view all, which the output just shows the sentence in a match, um, if we put boundary word in there, it'll automatically using that function, pick out the words and match those. So we don't have to separate it by white space or anything like that. And that also gives us the advantage of not choosing the, um, the period there. So we're just looking for the words. It just matches the words, which is nice. So here's an example kind of going back to using stir split and doing the same thing, but pulling splitting by the white space. And then this, this one here, um, it was just in the examples and I didn't really know why. So I tried taking it out in this example down here. The only reason this one is here is because I wanted to show what the output was without this one. And it's just a slightly more complex output. It looks like it's kind of putting it out in as a list item instead of a simpler output. So that's the only reason that this one is here. So we won't focus too much on that. So when using split by a white space, it will include this period in here and it'll just be splitting by the white space. And it'll be a little wonky, not that easy to look at because it also has um, empty, empty strings and mixed in there and stuff too. So it's, it's a lot nicer to use this boundary function and then split by word or character or whatever you wanna split it by because then we get this nice clean output where it's just split by the words and we don't have any empty strings in there. We don't have any uh, periods included or anything like that. It's just the words, so that's nice. So for the exercises, we can split up a string, uh, or it's asking us to split up a string like apples, pears, and bananas into individual components. So asking us to use that boundary word uh, function. So we can put that 
that function into the stir split function. And using this string, just pull out the words and there we go, just pulls out the um, each word in its individual string. Uh, we kind of already went over this a couple times, but why is it better to split up by boundary word uh, than just splitting by the white space? And that's because it's a lot cleaner when we pull out uh, just the words. We don't have any empty strings or periods. What does splitting with an empty string do? Experiment and then read the documentation. So this is super simple example. We're, look, we're from this sentence, we're just trying to split it by an empty uh, an empty string. And what it does is it just pulls out each character. And notice it also pulls out the white space there too. So splitting, what it, essentially this is doing is when you split with an empty string, it's the equivalent to splitting by boundary character. So if you remember when we first started talking about this boundary function, we can split by word, character, line break, um, and sentence. So that's pretty handy. So when we use boundary character, it'll split by each individual character. And then the period even has its, its own string there. So to find matches, I put the end here, but just disregard that for now. <laughs> so to find matches, we can use stir locate and stir locate all to give the starting and end position of each match. Um, so th this example here to stir locate uh, my fav this string, my favorite pie is apricot. We're looking for just apricot. And so what stir locate does is it returns the starting and ending positions of where this is. So in this sentence, the apricot starts at position number 20 and it ends at position number 26. So it just gives us a start in the end. And as you recall way back at the very beginning, I think that was like two weeks ago now, at the beginning of this chapter, we use the stir sub function to kind of do the same thing where it would return uh, the positions of where our match was, where the position in the string. So you can use stir locate to find the matching pattern and then stir sub to extract and or modify it. So it's kind of the same, the same thing here. We're here, we're using stir sub, uh, we're trying to find, we're just kind of going the opposite way here. We're instead of looking for apricot, we're looking for what is at position, starting at position 20 and then ending at position 26 and it returns the same thing. So I put the end here because originally when we were going through this, um, cause it, this chapter takes a long time and Daniel kept getting pushed back with his chapter. He wanted to pick up, he just wanted to finish up the tools section and we're pretty close to the end here, but he wanted to just finish with the tools section and then he was going to pick up today with, um, with his factors lesson and we were just gonna do this on our own. But since he kind of got pushed back to uh, next week and wasn't available today, I'll just finish up doing this, I think is probably the easiest way to do it. It's, there's not too much more left here. And we're at 25 past the hour. So this should kind of fill it up nicely. So um, other types of patterns. So now we're kind of moving away from this, the string package and everything that we've been, I mean, we're still using it a little bit here, but this is a little bit, a little bit different than uh, what we have been talking about. So when you use a pattern that's, that's a string, it's automatically wrapped into a call to regex. So this function right here. So what we've been doing with everything throughout the whole previous uh, chapter, we've been using essentially this regex call, but we just haven't been writing it because it's the default for all of these uh, string, string R packages. So here is just an example, stir view from the fruit data set. We want to match uh, NA, NA, and then we just want to pull the matches. We don't want to pull everything. So it does this, that's a simple match. It's shorthand for uh, this regex call in here. So really this is what we've been doing this whole time, but we just haven't needed to write it out because it's default. So we'll get the same output here. You can use the other arguments of regex to control the details of the match. And ignore case equals true allows the characters to match either uppercase or lowercase forms. And this is always in the current locale. 
So this is kind of an example of the original, since we are not using the ignore case argument here in this example, we are just searching for the word banana. So notice it just pulls banana, it's case sensitive. It's not gonna pull these other ones. If we use, um, if we use the ignore case true um, argument here, or parameter, then it will match everything. And we're, notice that we're putting, we do have to write in, because this ignore case true is a parameter of this regex call, this regex function, we need to include the regex function in there. We can't just include that up here. Like if we were to do banana comma ignore case equals true, it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't work. So we have to include this regex here if we do want to do this ignore case. So multi-line equals true allows these two characters was, as you recall, they are the anchors. Uh, this is our caret anchor to the beginning and our um, dollar sign anchor to the end. It allows these characters to match the start and end of each line rather than the start and end of a complete string. So also in the past lessons, every time we, we use this, it would match the start and end of the entire string. But if we had a sentence with multiple words in, in each string, and we couldn't use this to find, um, to find the start and end of each word, it would always just go to the beginning and the end of the entire sentence of the entire string. So here uh, we're using this new line um, special character here. So this is essentially a line break. And we are trying to extract everything that is um, that starts with, and that starts with the word line. So it's a little bit confusing of an example because they're using the word line here. But notice the point is it only returns one. So even this is one string right here, even though technically it's three different lines of text. Since it's one string, it's only going to pull the first time it says line. If we use stir extract all, same, same thing, but we put in this regex function, we actually write this out and then we put in the argument multi-line equals true, then it will take into account, it'll read essentially these special characters as new lines, and then it will pull the first part of each line. So it will return line, line, line. If we use comments equals true, uh, that allows us to use comments in white space to make complex regular expressions more understandable. So spaces are ignored as is everything after the hashtag mark or the pound sign. To match a literal space, you'll need to escape it um, twice in the string. So this is, we have a pretty complex regular expression here. And if you're writing writing your code well and you are so other people are going to be using it, you want to make sure it's very well explained. So this is a situation where you might want to do that instead of just having this big this big regular expression written out, we can uh, we can comment it out. but also the comments notice the comments are inside of the parentheses here for regex. but since we're using comments equals true, it understands that those are comments. Uh, stir match function here. Oh, I see what I see what it's doing. Okay, so we're using the stir match function, which separates out um, into a matrix form. We are looking for. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't looked at this example in a, in a couple of weeks, so I realize now like what what it's saying. So it's taking this number here and it's pulling out the match for this this big long regular expression here, and this is what we get. Here is our complete match. And then here's our groups that it's looking for and they're turned into columns. So yeah, first group, sorry. First group, second group, third group. And those correlate with one, two, three. Do tall equals true allows the period to match. Oh, so the um, all characters, special character to also match line terminators like new line. Because apparently before, when you would when you would type in a, a dot or a period, and you want it to have its special its special power, <laughs> you want it to match all characters. It would not normally match um, this character, the new line character. 
So if you do do tall equals true, it will also match the new line character. So there are three other functions you can use instead of the default regex. Uh, and those are fixed, call, and boundary. So fixed matches exactly the specified sequence of bytes. It ignores all regular, special regular expressions and operates at a very low level. So this allows you to avoid complex escaping and can be much faster than regular expressions. I didn't use this, I didn't look into this one too much, but I did uh, just got kind of go through the examples here, but uh, essentially fixed allows you to type in the pattern match that you're looking for as it appears in the string. So it's a little bit easier to look at. So here is a vector of three strings and we are searching for um, just these using this fixed uh, opera or fixed function. We're searching for just two backslashes in here. So instead of if we were to just use the default regex, this would have to be a regular expression and it would have to be four back or actually, yes, it would have to be four backslashes to match one literal, yes, okay, <laughs> it had to be four backslashes. But since we're using fixed, we want to search for how it's actually going to appear in the string. So it can be a little bit simpler, I guess, if you're, um, if that's the way that you're, um, that you're writing the rest of your code and you're familiar with using this fixed uh, argument. Oh, and here's our match. That's what it's matching is the single, single backslash. So this, I had to install micro ben benchmark package before running the next code snippet. Uh, this was already in the source document. I tried running it and it was messing up my whole code. So I actually removed it. So I put in, this comment was already in here. I put in this part. So I had to remove it because it was causing an error message and it wasn't allowing me to knit the, uh, knit the document. But it doesn't seem to make difference with but I'm not really sure. But anyway, we're using um, fixed with non-English data. It's problematic because there's often multiple ways of representing the same character. For example, there's two ways to define A with this little accent on the top, either as a single character or as an A plus the accent. So we can see that here um, that these are these are the two different. So we're, here we're using Unicode just to show what those what those look like. But it will notice how this one, the output is um, A with the accent, and then this one is A and then the accent after it. And that's not anything that's kind of incorrect. And that's just showing that those are not read as the same thing. They do not equal each other. So they render identically, but because they're defined differently, fixed doesn't find a match. Instead, um, to fix this, you can use call, and that's for collate, I believe, um, to respect the human character comparison rules. So we can take uh, stir detect, use the fixed function to find that. So this is just showing that fixed does, does not work. Uh, it's false. There's this A2 is nowhere, we can't find a match of A2 within A1 because they're different. But when we use stir detect and we put uh, this call argument in there, it will match it. So it says it's true. So this is essentially, this one right here is saying the same thing as, as this. It's just saying it does, does not match. But if we put call in front of it, it does match. Uh, so call compares compare strings using standard collation rules. It's useful for doing some case insensitive matching. Note that call, the call function, takes a locale parameter that controls which rules are used for comparing characters. And unfortunately, different parts of the world use different rules. So this this example is a little weird, but uh, so that means that you also need to be aware of the difference when doing case insensitive matches. So these, we used kind of in this example for some, for a different function earlier on. This is apparently um, in the Turkish language, there's different types of, there's an I with, with a dot and there's an I without a dot. So here we're taking um, a character vector of all four of those and seeing how it outputs and 
this does not out, this just outputs as an uppercase I. So we don't get the same output there. If we use the call function, what it should be doing, um, I think, oh no, okay. I, I'm not sure because I think my computer, I don't know if I am not defaulting to this. This might be what this micro benchmark package was talking about, but this doesn't seem to be, it returns the same thing here. And I don't think it was supposed to because I think it's supposed to be showing that it doesn't work or that you have to put in ignore case true in order for it to return this same thing. Because notice we're not getting this returned either here or here. I think it was supposed to return it here, I believe, but I'm not positive what was supposed to happen with that example. Um, but, oh, okay, so when we do, and then when we do put in, we're looking for ignore case is true and we're using the locale of the Turkish, we're saying that we're in Turkey, it will only return um, this lowercase letter. I think since we're searching for that, it returns that. Whereas here, if we're searching for that, it returns everything. Okay. I think I kind of understand that. But anyway, that's that's the, the collate function. If you if you put collate as an argument into uh, your stir subset or into your stir functions, it will um, account for human error, I think is what it says. To respect human care human character comparison rules. So might need to look into that one a little bit more. So both fixed and regex have ignore case arguments, but they do not allow you to pick the locale. They always use the default locale. So um, this is just using from my local computer from the string I package pulling str stri local info. And this is just saying that um, the language is English, country is US, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, the downside of call is, this is just to find your default um, the default locale, which is what fixed and regex will use. The downside of call is speed because the rules for recognizing which characters are the same are complicated. Call is re relatively slow compared to regex and fixed. So as you saw with stir split, you can use boundary to match borders. You can also use it, sorry, I'm moving this around a lot because my little screen's in the way here. You can also use it with the other functions. Um, so stir view all, use boundary word. I'm not really sure why this is going over this again. Because the rules for recognizing which character is the same. Okay. You can use boundary to match boundaries. You can use it with other functions. Oh, okay. <laughs> I Sorry. Um, so we can use boundary in here with, with word. Um, we can also use it in the stir extract all function um, and it separates out each, each word. We already kind of went, went over this, but it's just another way to, um, to use matches instead of using the default regex. We can just use the boundary argument in there. So pretty close to the bottom here. Um, how would you define all strings? Sorry, how would you find all strings contain a backslash with regex versus fixed stir detect versus with fixed? Oh, okay. <laughs> with sorry, I didn't realize that I put the answers in here and I didn't read it how it was uh, how it was being displayed here. So, how would you find all strings containing a backslash with regex versus with fixed? So here's the answer here with stir detect. Um, we, since regex is the default, this is just an example. We're looking for a backslash. It's our simple match. We're searching for um, four backslashes equals one backslash. Versus stir detect, um, we're using fixed. As you recall, fixed is just, all you have to type is how it will appear in the string. So if we're searching for a string 
that has a backslash in it, that string will have to have that backslash escaped. So it'll be two backslashes with the fixed function. We're just searching for how it appears in the string. So I guess it's a little bit simpler to write it using just, just the default regular expression up here. It's a little bit shorter, a little bit less typing. Um, I did not answer this question. What are the five most common words and sentences? Uh, I need to do a little bit more research. I, just, I think I started trying to do that one and um, I just ran into a couple dead ends. So I need to look at that, the answer, the answer key on that one. Other uses of regular expressions. There are two useful functions in base R that also use regular expressions. Apropos uh, searches all objects available in the global environment. And this is useful if you can't quite remember the name of a function. So you can use apropos uh, replace and it will just pull out anything that ha in your global environment that has the word replace in it. So if you're like, I'm pretty sure there was a function that had the word replace in it, what was it? And it'll just list it and you can be like, oh, that's what I was looking for. Also though, with the auto complete function in our studio, when you start to just type in str, it'll pop up the whole list of all um, the string R package functions. So that's kind of handy too. Uh, the dir function, the dir function lists all the files in the directory and the pattern argument, the pattern argument takes a regular expression and only returns the file names that match that pattern. So if you're looking for uh, an R markdown file, you can use regular expression here, like use your, use what we've learned with regular expressions. So we're escaping, we're double escaping this. We just want to find a dot RMD at the end. So it's anything that ends, any file name that ends in RMD for our markdown. So it's just kind of a handy way if you just want to pull out anything that's an R markdown file. So this is the end. Uh, so the string, string I, um, the difference between the two is that string R is built on top of the string I package. String R is useful when you're learning because, got to move my windows here, because it exposes a minimal set of functions which have been carefully picked to handle the most common string manipulation functions. String I on the other hand, or string E, I'm not sure how the regular way to say it is, is designed to be comprehensive and it contains almost every function that you might ever need. So string I has 250 functions compared to string R is 49. So that's just kind of goes, goes to show how much larger that is. And if you find yourself struggling to do something in string R, it's worth taking a look at string I. Uh, the packages work very similarly. So you should be able to translate your string R knowledge in a natural way. The main difference is the prefix. With uh, the string R package, the prefix is always str underscore, which is what we've been seeing this whole chapter. Um, but anything that you're using in the string I package will just have the extra I in there. So it'll be str I underscore. Um, and Oh, I did answer these. Okay, find the string functions that count the number of words. Um, so this was just really a matter of searching the, the string I package, all the different functions. And um, okay, Adayumi is taking off. All right, we'll see you, see you next week, Adayumi. Um, so and we're right, right at the end here anyway, but but yeah, so this three STRI count boundaries is the one that counts the number of words, which is handy. Find duplicated strings, STRI duplicated, pretty straightforward. Um, I don't know why this number three is here. Generate random text, uh, STRI rand lipsum. So that's short for random lorem ipsum, which is, uh, finds random text if you need to generate that, which I do a little bit of web design work and that's, that's pretty handy to just, if you want to fill in some text space with something, just some random words, you can uh, use that. I haven't used this function to do that because I, I don't usually, I haven't used R in web design, but uh, that's handy. That's a handy function of that. And how do you control the language that Stree sort uses for sorting? Um, you just need to specify the locale parameter. So as we talked about, there's a sort 
um, when you use, I think it's just stir sort, but it just sorts it alphabetically. And of course, everybody's alphabets, every country's alphabets are different. So it defaults to English, but if you want to specify um, a different, different alphabet that you're searching for, you just have to use set your locale parameter for whatever country you're in. So that's that. Looks like we did it all with like 13 minutes to spare. So I think I think that's everything for this chapter. It was a giant chapter. I know <laughs> I know Adeyemi had some he he dropped off, but I know earlier when we first started this like back in October he had some really long chapters too that were like three, four weeks long. So um, I was thinking I was going to get this wrapped up within one week, but it was it ended up being three weeks pretty much. So it's a it's a big long chapter, but it's really I found it really interesting. I kind of thought it was going to be a little boring, but there's actually some pretty useful useful things in here that I look forward to um, trying out and testing out and using on actual real data sets. I think that would be pretty fun. But other than that, I think um, I think we're all set and um, Daniel will be back next week and I should be here next week too as a as a guest audience but uh, Daniel will be presenting the factors chapter next week so so yeah oh I can't hear you I can't I can see you talking Mary Elena but I can't hear you hold on I can I can't hear you. <laughs> I can see you're trying to talk, but I can't hear you on there. Oh no. I don't know if that's me or you. Oh, and then I just and then I just lost her screen sharing. Maybe if I try stopping the share. Oh, no, can, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Great. That, that was a bit weird. I know. I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> me neither. Like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope that was, I, I hope that was informative, that chapter, just because it was like so long. Yeah. So... I, I, no, no. I, I was actually commenting on how well you did present this chapter, which was like too much information and it was... <laughs> It was actually interesting to see how many different functions you have for the same for doing the same thing. Yeah, in our yeah. yeah, and I think that's what kind of it kind of confuses me. Just since I'm just learning, I'm like, there's so many different ways, and in my mind, I'm like, what's the right way to do this? You know, and then you really start learning about it. And you're like, okay, there's lots of different ways you could do it. So it's just exactly. makes it a little more difficult to learn. It kind of makes like this a steeper learning curve, but mm -hmm. it. I think it's kind of like focusing on one thing, you know, like this chapter started out, it was like, here's, here's one way of doing this. Here's the string R package, you know, there's like this whole other, there's a million different ways to do it, but here's the way to do it within this one package. And I think for me, it was just kind of a nice way to learn, you know, like learning one way and then being able to expand later on and learn more, but yeah, but yeah, uh, it was, uh, it was it was fun. It was it was a long one. So <laughs> yeah, indeed, yeah. <laughs> I know. And I haven't like ever ever used the, those packages before. So it was interesting to see how you can play with strings and finding um, words and boundaries and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, and, yeah, I look forward to kind of trying it out more with yeah. actual real data. There's a lot of things that popped up in my mind. I'm like, oh, I could use it for this and that. And I just haven't had a chance to get around doing it. So hopefully I get to try it before I forget everything that I just learned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. It's like all out the window. But uh, but yeah, it's really fun. Do you do you have like that that is that you could apply those those type of functions? I think so I haven't done in in this process of learning about R, I was I've kind of learned a little bit about like um, 
like web scraping. And so mm. using like XML or HTML files and just pulling basically all the data, all that data from a website. And then I can see where it would be handy, like searching for specific terms, you know, especially if it's like a comment section of a blog and you're like, oh, how did people feel about this thing or whatever, you know? And it's just, you can search for the words like loved or it was great or I hated it or so, you know, something like that. I mean, it's just kind of a basic way to do it, but it's just these, I, I could, I can, I can see all the possibilities for it, but I just, and that's probably just the tip of the iceberg, but I just, mm. you know, I'd like to be able to kind of, I, I don't know, I've learned a little bit just about reading XML files and that kind of, that kind of like web scraping stuff. And I think it's really interesting, but I just haven't done any of it yet. And I think it's got a lot of, uh, there's a lot of like power to that too, you know? Yeah, but, for sure. I haven't used uh, like that type of files for R either. I've I've mostly used it for data analysis, but very specific stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's it's very nice through the book to see like other uses. Of yeah, our, yeah, yeah. It seems pretty. I kind of didn't even really realize until I read this chapter that you could do all that stuff with it. Because like you were saying, I've just been using using it for basic like learning, using it for data analysis stuff, like pulling pulling data out of charts and out of text files, yeah, exactly. and CSV files and stuff like that. You're like, oh, I'm looking for this specific piece of data out of this cell and whatever, and, and putting it into a ggplot, you know, but it's, <laughs> it's uh, doing all this text stuff. It's like a whole different world, you know, it's, it's completely different. And it's just really cool that you can do that with R. So it's exciting. I agree. And it's not like the, the language that is usually used for uh, for those type of stuff. I've seen mm -hmm. more, more things on Python than on R. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's nice to know that you can do some stuff with R as well. Yeah, um, yeah. That's what, do you, is most of your experience, are you uh, more of a Python person? Do you have more experience in Python? No, I no, definitely okay. not. Yeah. Uh, I'm a total like newbie in Python, but I, I have way more experience in R, but as I said, like mostly the analysis part and some uh, plotting and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, not uh, not the, that type of, um, of work we've done through this book. Yeah, okay. Uh, I, uh, even though like I'm in linguistics, so you know, the, um, I know that uh, all those stuff we were doing, like uh, all those stuff, we were doing like the, the boundaries and searching for words and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Uh, computational linguists use usually Python to do that type oh, of work. Okay. Not R. Yeah. Okay. But, but well, that's... it's very, very, not very, how to say, like interesting. To see yeah. That do that's that's like R2. perfect. I mean, if you're in linguistics, that kind of seems like there could be a lot of applications. Like if I, I, if I were you, I'd be I'd like super excited about it. At least it seems like there's a lot you can, there's a lot you can do with it in, in linguistics and in just definitely yeah, pulling out phrases and words and in like weird spellings of things. I don't know. It's just, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty cool what you can do with it. So that's perfect. That's good. I'm glad that I'm glad that it was explained well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, you, you did a great job. Yeah. Good. Nice. <laughs> good. So next I'm, chapter will be Daniel, right? I, the, it's like yeah. the last part. Yeah. Uh, it's um, and then I was, I was originally signed up to do dates and times as well, but I was just talking, uh, chatting on Slack with Daniel yesterday and he, he said, since this chapter was really long and I think his factors chapter is a little bit shorter. So he's like, if you don't, if, if you would like, he's like, I could take dates and times as well. So he'll be doing okay. dates and times too. And that finishes up the whole uh, data wrangling portion of the book. And then it okay. moves on to the next portion or the next section. So, so I think he'll be doing that too. I haven't signed up for anything else. I'm not sure. I haven't looked at the Google sheet to see what. Um... I, I have signed for the next chapter. So it's like functions. Okay. I, so I think, uh, yeah, as far as I remember, um, uh, it was like the two first um, chapters that, have, uh, that I have signed up. I, I am, I'm not sure because I okay. remember that it was Daniel somewhere. So yeah. I just picked like the, 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 the ones that were not taken. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So That's we'll kind of see what, how that goes. Yeah, I know it's it's just it's interesting to see 
how how long it's, it just seems to take a lot longer and then I, get, I know <laughs> like I get all kind of self-conscious when I'm doing the presentation I'm like am I talking way too much about this you know like am I beating no. this ground or it's like I don't know how I'm pacing myself so it just kind of ended up being a lot longer than I thought but I'm I'm glad that it wasn't it wasn't too much information or too little it just um I wanted to make sure it was uh I, I wanted to make sure I, that was kind of what the, took the longest was making sure I kind of understood some things. Cause there was definitely some things that I was like, I did not understand when I went over it the first, the first few times. So this was really, it was really helpful. I was nervous about doing this. Cause I'm like, who am I to present something? I don't know anything about this, you know, but just the fact that I had the presentation coming up, um, and for you to with, you know, with, uh, uh, functions and everything, it's just, it really solidified it for me. It really solidified it in my mind. It was really helpful to actually do the presentation. And um, it just, it, it helped me out a lot. I think I understand it a lot better than if I were just listening to it, you know, so. Mm, it definitely, I'm sure it's gonna help uh, like me as well. Whoever, whoever presents every time, I, I, I feel that, you know, it gets them more experience because mm -hmm. you have to explain it to yourself first and then to yeah. others yeah so you kind of force yourself uh to learn it but um the thing is that usually i have like too much too many things on my plate and i wasn't yeah. sure whether i could like sign up for something soon but i think i'll have that i yeah. i'll do it yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that's it, it is it's, it's tough too, is when I was, when I was signing up for it, it was months ahead of time. You know, I was like, this is going to be a few months down yeah. the road. I don't know what I'm going to have going on. You know, like, I don't know how busy I'm going to be. And I did have, I've had some things come up where I'm like, that's why I was so thankful when Daniel was like, I'll take dates and times if you want. I was like, yes. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah. I was like, thank you. I was like, I'll be there to listen to your presentation, but it's exactly. just kind of a big load off to, to not do it. So it's, it's fun doing it, but it is, it is a commitment. And when you have other things going exactly. on, it takes up, it takes up some time, but the group does seem to be really like, if something comes up and even like the day of, you know, something comes up and you're like, oh, I can't make it then it's fine. You know, it's like, we'll do it, do it the next week or whatever. So everybody, it seems to be pretty easy going. So that's nice. Yeah, I, I, I agree. We are in the end, we're a very small group. I feel that, yeah, usually it's like three or four of us. So yeah. we can, we, we can arrange stuff among yeah. ourselves and yeah, yeah, everybody, as you said, is easy going. So, yeah. 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 And it's nice that it's recorded too. So if you do miss miss Ooh. something i've gone back and watched some of the the previous cohort oh. recordings and it's just kind of kind of helpful to to uh, understand things a little bit better too especially if i miss one of miss one of our meetings but yeah. cool all right nice. well so will you be here next week uh yeah most likely if nothing weird comes up <laughs> right right like we we're just talking I'll about here, as long as so. nothing else happens <laughs> exactly right you uh, yeah, I should be here. Same thing. Like as long as nothing else comes up, like I should okay. be here. Like, and it's, it's a pretty good time. Like where I'm at, I'm in Washington state. So it's, it's from 9am to 10am for me. So it's kind of, it's kind of a nice time, you know, where it's mm -hmm. not like if it were in the evening, I think for like a day of me, I think it's like seven o'clock in the evening for a day of me. I'm not sure what time it is for Daniel, but I'm like, I would be, I'm not really around during that. So, you know, I'm like making dinner and stuff like that. So it's kind yeah. of, for my, the time zone is, is pretty, is fairly easy for me, unless I have something going on in the morning. So, um, unless I'm just not around, then, then I'll, then I'll be here. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> exactly. I mean, for me, it's in the afternoon. It's like from seven to eight. In the afternoon. Okay. So, because I'm in Greece, but, um, oh, okay. yeah, I, I mean, it could be a bit like earlier, but anyway, I mean, I've adapted and it's, it's quite a good time. I mean, I usually yeah. I'm around, so yeah. 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 And it's just it kind of works. <laughs> right. Right. It seems to be pretty easy to just pop on. And, and if you have but, to leave early, you can leave early. Like, like we were saying, it's just nice. And it's like, it's just nice and casual and it's just a good way to, <laughs> it's a good way to learn. So I've been, I've exactly. been enjoying it so far. It's a safe environment for learning. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I've been in some groups before where I'm very clearly 
like the least experienced one, you know, and I'm just oh, like, no. like, I don't want to say anything. Cause it's just like, oh boy, like I don't, I'm way, in, way over my head right now. But, uh, but this group is, this group is good. Cause there's a big range of experience and everybody mm. is really friendly and, and helpful. So it's been fun. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I have also received the good vibes from the group. So yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Well, I will. Um, I'll probably see you next week. Then have a great weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, you too. Enjoy. Have a have a great day as well because it's morning there. <laughs> yeah, I know, and it's sunny out today. It's like never sunny out here, so I'm like excited. To oh go yay! Yeah. <laughs> it's always raining usually, so it's like the sun's out. I'm gonna oh. go for a walk. Oh, very nice. <laughs> All right. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.